I'm really hoping you like this book. <laughs> I'm really desperately hoping. Because if not, I will be a sad lady. A sad, sad lady. Preferably in a residential area. Should be played at high volume. A fatally depressed young woman finds out that she can't even kill herself correctly and it ends up in an intermediate quantum state that her brain decides is a library. She gets to try different lives as easily as trying different food at a buffet. And just like all the other gluttonous pigs at the buffet feeding trough, she tries it all and is still unsatisfied. Like a creepy poltergeist, she possesses the body of her alternate self and looks around their life like it's a thrift store. She eventually decides that she's better off right back where she started, covered in vomit and barely clinging to life. So what's your telling me is you did not like this book. Why are you so worried if I like this book or not? Because this is a great book. I feel like you hate on all books. <laughs> you only like which books? Which ones? Star Wars? Star Trek? Well, we I have, don't know. We have recently gone through like this short span of books that I just don't like. And I also really like this book. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. Oh, I God. really, really enjoyed this book. I did not think I was going to, so I can see where you were worried. Okay. Because it kind of reminded me of like the alchemist, how yeah. they were always giving you some like grandiose like quotes about how to live your life. This kind of does the same thing. It tells you how to live your life, but in a different way, in a, in a much more grounded way. It was like a therapeutic way almost. It was a very therapeutic book. So I will say that I didn't just like this book. I actually really loved it. Oh my God. I know, it was rare for me to just love a book, but I, I could read this book a second time. I thought Nora Seed was a generic character. Right. But in a good way in that, like, I think anybody can see themselves like in her shoes. Like a blank canvas, yeah. Exactly. But I think that's the point, right? Like, she's a person that doesn't enjoy life or her life, and she pushes everybody out of her life, and then she commits suicide. That's not a spoiler, right? That's the, the beginning of this right. story. And then right in this intermediate state where she's, like, almost dead, but not really, she goes to this place called the Midnight Library, where she can read different books about the different choices she made in her life. And I thought it was awesome because not every choice was like what she thought. It wasn't great. It also wasn't terrible. Mm -hmm. It was just this, like, just a life, like any other life. Like an and alternate life. she just life, decided yeah. if she liked it or not. God, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Like, it it gets really dark and depressing at times, and you start to really even just, like you said, it was kind of, there was nothing really special about her, so you can kind of put yourself in her place. I don't know, at least for me, I feel like I'm not a very special human being. Like, there's nothing that special about me, so I kind of really related to her, like, a lot, and I felt like, man, that could be me or my life or something. So going through all these lives with her, which I thought was so amazing. Like, can you imagine? But so some of them were dark and some of them were super deep and things like that. And I was just like, wow, it really got me thinking about just my regrets and like a lot of different lives I could have lived with just like the smallest difference or the smallest choice. Ha yeah, just the yeah. smallest thing. A single thing. choice would have just like, and she tells, so they're in the library, there's a librarian that kind of like navigates her through all these books. Right. And she tells her that like, there's millions or infinite choices, basically, right? There's infinite books in this library, because it branches off from all of her choices, right? Should I get the burger? Or should I get the taco? There's a whole different life that spawns from that. So she has to pick some of the lives she had. And it was interesting that she picked her regrets first, right? Like I regretted not joining my brother in the band. So, so she see. tries that. Mm -hmm. I regretted not swimming for my parents. So she tries that. And then I regretted not going to Australia for her friend. So she tries that. But all of that doesn't work out because that's, those are all things she's for doing other for people, other yeah. people. And then she starts trying things for herself that she thought she was going to enjoy. And then it doesn't turn out that way. And Man. again, it's not, the lives are not like terrible. No. Right? They're just lives and it's just she just doesn't feel like that is the life that you want that this Nora seed mm -hmm. wanted to live like throughout like as soon as she started to kind of realize like the truth of it all I think that's when I started to get a little like pumped up like oh my god like let me live my life like just how I want it in this moment yeah. like you know it's it does amazing. leave you feeling like the choices in your life do matter where I think or at least I feel like you go through life and then you feel like oh the choices don't matter I'm not gonna work out today what does it matter I'm not gonna like study for that test what does it matter yeah. but then this book like helps you realize that you know all it those all small things do matter right yeah. like you said 
you don't feel like important in your life, mm -hmm. right? But you have two kids that rely on you mm -hmm. and you know, you're like God in their eyes, <laughs> right? Know. You're married and yeah. able relies on you and you got family that rely on you to show up for different things yeah. and they count on you to be there for different things, you know? So I think that's one thing that Nora Seed had forgotten, right? That like her, her, importance. her importance in her family and in her friend. Right when she came back from the brink, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, but her family does pop up right yeah. she's like oh nobody loves me and everybody hates me but people then start reconnecting with her and she's like oh i just had to wait i didn't have to kill myself like as friends do over time when you go your different paths you start to kind of you know do your own thing and that communication isn't always there for months and months and months and that's yeah. what her friend was doing her best friend she was living her life not that she didn't want nora in it but yeah, it's just, just living you know, her life yeah exactly but she thought okay i'm not a part of her life she doesn't want me in her life like what what happened what went wrong yeah like, i just like that that i felt like there was endless possibilities yeah. Um, to your life, which is so amazing. I said that this book is more grounded, but she ends up <laughs> yeah. like in a quantum state yeah. in a library Crazy. made up by her brain. And she also has all these different lives and there's a librarian. There's some kind of like technical aspect to yeah. the library. It's How like it breaking worked. down a little yeah. bit. And What do you think of Miss Elm? Mrs. Elm? I felt like she could have been more intriguing. What? I thought she was so cool. I thought she was semi-interesting. She was at least more interesting than Nora Seed. Right. Again, Nora Seed has a character character doesn't really work because she's not interesting the only interesting thing about her is that she's uninteresting that's how she I starts suppose. and then we go explore all of these other alternatives to an interesting that could Nora be interesting. Seed. yeah exactly yeah relative to Nora Seed the librarian it's pretty interesting yeah right? but that character fails as well because that character is either a figment of Nora Seed's imagination or just doesn't exist at all or her subconscious because the other guy she meets in uh, one of the lives, he mm -hmm. says that it's like his uncle or something that's running a video store. Right. So it's not oh, yeah, it's just actually Miss they... Elm. It's just, I <sighs> guess, like the Matrix, right? Like there's just mm -hmm. a projection of whoever they wanted to be there. I just thought, oh, maybe it's just like her subconscious, like... Yeah, it is. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I like Miss Elm as a character, but she's not really a character, right? Mm -hmm. She's just a part of Nora because Nora's making all of Projecting. this happen. Okay. Right? They cuz yeah. they had described in there that it's some kind of quantum state that she's in. Right. And she can't really comprehend it. So her brain turns it into a library. Something she can get. Yeah, right. Exactly. The descriptions throughout this entire book, the author is fantastic with his descriptions yes. of both places and mm -hmm. and ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it was so it, it felt so fluid like it was meant to be Yeah. Oh it, my god. It's it never really feels contrived, which was my problem with The Alchemist. Every scenario mm -hmm. and person felt contrived to deliver him some kind of like meaningful quote yeah. that'll send him on his journey. That never felt like it in this book. It always felt like Nora was coming to some realization naturally, mm -hmm. which was great. It was some kind of internal dialogue, which also helped. Like people don't just show up in your life and give you some powerful quote. So I think... <laughs> That's why this book worked better than The Alchemist yeah. is. It's like her internal dialogue that comes to these conclusions on her own through experiences. Yeah, know, yeah. It doesn't just pop up randomly, <laughs> right? It happens through the story. Yeah. You don't have random strangers coming up to you and just boom, boom, <laughs> pounded you with some yeah. knowledge. No. Nope. <laughs> no. I don't know. I really have to read this one again because it's so amazing. And I didn't actually get like the physical book. So I am so excited. Oh my God. I can't wait. And he's, he's also funny, too, in so small funny. ways yeah, throughout funny. it. So in the beginning of the story, you start to realize Nora's life is crap. Oh, yeah. Everybody she meets doesn't like her. Or they're trying to distance themselves from her. But isn't that always and perspective, then, too? That's her, We learn later that it's just a perspective. Yeah. And then there's even a moment where she tries to give a homeless man some money, but then she doesn't realize, she, or she realizes she doesn't have any money. <laughs> oh, she, that's right. She tries to give a homeless man money, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have she's any like, money. She's like, damn, my bad. <laughs> Should I say? Which was, uh, again, great <laughs> writing because you learn so much about her character right. with just one sentence, and it's funny. All three of those things, uh, all in one sentence, makes a great writer. So we learned that she's giving, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that she, she doesn't have anything to give. It's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts. And it's kind of funny. So you get all of those things in one yeah. sentence. I wish I could write like that. I really do too. I felt like, oh my God, if I could write a book, it'd probably be something like this. It's yeah. amazing. 
Um, I don't want to say I came up with the idea. I, I definitely did not. But I did have an idea for a story where the beginning of the story is a man. He's, he's like going through his life and everybody kind of like rejects him and hates him. Um, but I couldn't figure out like what it was all leading to. And it was all just kind of depressing. So I just kind of stopped writing it. Ah, oh, but maybe it was something along <laughs> yeah, the Yeah, and then I was this. like, oh man, this is like what I was trying to write. Yeah. He definitely had a way better idea. If I had tried to write this novel, <laughs> it would not have been this good. I promise you. But I had tried to write something like this a long yeah. time ago. I feel like each of the lives she lived were so powerful in like so many different ways of like teaching yeah. her things or showing her things or being like, uh, well, I didn't like that. You know what I mean? So it I, was almost like she was learning about herself. Like she didn't know herself before. That was a good, that's a good way of saying it. I didn't think of it like that. She's learning about herself and she learns that her regrets are not really her regrets. It's just things that she thought have, would have worked out. But now she knows that, you know, no. they would have worked out, but it's just not what she wanted. And that's what I, again, I think I'm harping on this over and over again, but it's not that the lives are bad. Right. There's no life that she goes to and she's right like or a or junkie bad, or something yeah. and she's like desperate. No, it's 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 a good life. It's just not the life she wants. Mm -hmm. Like for example, there's this movie with uh, Ashton Kutcher called The Butterfly Effect. Oh yeah. Where it's kind of similar. Like he goes to different mm -hmm. lives to try to save his girlfriend, I think. I think so. And in every single life his girlfriend dies or she's like a prostitute or a drug <laughs> addict. It's always just something or something sad. terrible. Yeah. Um, where this one's definitely not like that. I like the fact that she just has, um, like you said, a powerful life in one way or another. Yeah, it was always like a lot of powerful moments. Like the first life she lives, right, where she ends up marrying that guy, and then like they had like a pub together. That was like yeah. their their dream, oh, but her, it really wasn't. Her right? boyfriend in in real in her life, yeah, yeah. she thought they would be happy, mm -hmm. married, happy, have a business. Turns out Turns that's out not how it works. It. Yeah. yeah. Turns out, oh man, I don't want to give it away. You should really read but this God, book. But God, didn't you? But didn't you feel like you were there though? Like when you were reading that part, I felt like, man, I showed up in the dark outside this pub. Yeah. Like, and he, and what I really liked too. Disoriented, like. You're right. He places us in the scenes. We understand where we're at, and we understand uh, Nora's perspective immediately. And each chapter is like five pages. Yes. Like it's not even that long. Right. I've read some books that take like twenty pages mm -hmm. just to describe one scene. Right. We're able to live all these different lives. All within a few pages. I had no idea. Like, because I listened to it on audiobooks, it felt like a much longer book. But looking at it in person, I'm like, oh my God, this is not that long at yeah. all. And I actually loved the reading process too, because when I was reading, I can read one life that she decides to live. And then I, she comes back to the library. I'm like, okay, this is a good stopping point because right. I know she's going to go find another life. Right. So it's like very easy reading to just decide to put it down and come back later. At some point, did you be like, because she went through a lot of lives. Remember yeah. at one point she was like, man, I've gone through like so many. Like at some point he just stopped explaining them. He was, yeah. She was just living she just life. I was like, are we just going to, like how is this going to end? Like how is this, I was like, to be honest, I was a little like anxiety written over it. Because I was like, <laughs> oh no, how's this going to go? I don't get it. Like I, I didn't see the ending that yeah. it gave us. I didn't see the ending either, but I was hoping for the ending we got. Yeah. Because I was hoping she had realized that her life, as she left it, was kind of like a blank slate. She could start over, she could do whatever she wanted. Whereas the life she was taking over, I felt like she was stealing somebody's life. And that's kind of what she felt like and too. Yeah, she yeah. came to that conclusion shortly after I came to it. I was like, she doesn't deserve these lives, right? She like didn't the work lives, for it. good or bad, like she didn't work for it. She didn't put in the hours of swimming practice. She didn't put in the hours of band practice. You know, she. She doesn't deserve it. Or of having kids. Or like, having kids. Like through. she took, uh, I think we're going to give it away. But yeah, she didn't deserve the lives. And I'm glad she came to that same conclusion. Yeah. Because then I really liked her at that point. Oh, what'd you yeah. think about the dream when she was in uh, with the polar bear? The polar bear <laughs> scene. That was really fun too. Um, Epic. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, what would I do in that moment? Yeah, I would definitely freeze because I... Uh, I've only seen polar bears in zoos, and yeah. they're pretty huge. They're huge, and we're far. We're pretty far from yeah. them. Yeah, seeing one in the wild where it's just you and him. Oh, coming at you. <laughs> oh, I was scared. I was like, oh, shit. What is she going to do? 
That was amazing. And I also felt like the technical aspects of going into the lives were kind of weird. Like, she didn't have any information about the live she was in. I know. So every time she entered a life, the very first thing she had to do was take out her phone and research herself. Which was really weird because I don't have a huge online presence. So, like, if I tried a different life, like, I would have to Google myself. I'm like, oh, I found nothing. This is a depressing life. <laughs> Maybe I should move on now. <laughs> I have 12 Twitter followers. <laughs> Six of them are dog owners that yeah. follow my dog pics. But that is very helpful that she had a cell phone at least so she can look back at emails, text, yeah. So I you wish know. the mechanics of going into a life were a little bit better. Not but really I guess though. from a writing perspective, I guess you also need that because you need to explain it to the reader. Yeah, because so, we're Dang also, it, again, good no, writing. Because we're also thrown into it with her. Like we're yeah. not supposed to know anything because, you know, yeah, it's not really Yeah, because if she was life. like injected with all of the information she needed for that life, like how would you convey that to the reader? Mm -hmm. she would have to just sit there and explain it to them, which would be boring. So mm -hmm. again, just a good writing decision that I probably wouldn't have made. Because <laughs> in my brain, I'd be like, oh, you need a better mechanism to deliver that information when you enter a mm -hmm. life. Why would it be that way? And I would have written something to where like she just knew. Yeah. And I probably would have written it in a way where like going through her life, the reader would have had to piece together mm -hmm. like what, you know, what this life is and what she's learning from it. But I don't think it would have been that engaging. So yeah, I would have I... failed trying to finish my probable book like this yeah i think the purpose was also that you know you're in you you're all of a sudden thrown into this new life kind of have to orient yourself kind of have to like you know be on your toes just a little bit but isn't that like life yeah like i kind of had that feeling like that's kind of why maybe i'm totally wrong maybe i'm just like making up some stuff but i felt like that was another whole like point of it all was like that's just life you just gotta like jump into it and make a choice like do because she that's what she did she's like okay i'm just gonna do this i don't know the dynamics here with this person but i'm just gonna go with it or i'm just those were all choices that she made yeah i think that's a really good point too is making a choice in her initial life she makes no choices yes exactly right None. she pushes people away just because she doesn't do any action and in all the other lives with the polar bear she's forced to take action and she realizes that when she takes action she actually has control of her life. She has power. Mm -hmm. She can decide what her life's going to be. Yeah, I honestly, that polar bear scene was so powerful to me. I felt like empowered. I was like, <laughs> man, this is amazing. I felt the adrenaline. I felt like so scared. I was like, oh my God, what would I do in this moment? Like, ah, that's scary. Yeah. So what do you think your midnight library would be? Um, like you killed yourself tomorrow and <laughs> you ended up in that quantum state what would be your midnight library well i would hope it would be something like this it would probably be I a library i love that yeah. yeah i don't know who my person would be that would kind of help me around and guide me well it was unexpected for her to be the librarian right yeah i imagine if it was somebody very close to you that you loved it would probably be your mom or dad but it wasn't it was something of a random person that was helpful to her in her past yeah hmm, so i wonder who yeah so you can't think of any rando in your past that was like, oh, Maybe that, a teacher. Cool. I had a uh, fifth grade teacher. She was pretty cool. I remember learning a lot from her. What was her name? Miss, uh, Miss Graff, I think. My library would have been like a, it probably would have been like a buffet or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that makes a lot of sense. And the uh, waiter behind the counter of the feeding trough would probably be like a sergeant from the army or something that I know. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Dang, he's just me yelling at you all the time. So let's get, um, you know, pretty deep into your life, Rita. What kind uh -oh. of choices would you make differently in oh, your midnight okay. library? okay. Like it says on the back, would you yeah. have done anything different would if you, you had the done, chance to undo your regrets? What, was, what would be one thing you would do differently if you uh, had the chance? What would be the first book you reached for? Um, shoot, that's a good question. Dang, we're getting real deep. I'm getting sweaty now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me contemplate my life. Yeah, what's happening right now? Oh, maybe if I did sports in, in high school, actually. I remember, dude, I used to run a mile in like six minutes flat, which is pretty good for That's a girl. That's pretty good. Yeah, and I remember, I remember the coach, he, would, he asked me one day, so I was done with the mile really early, and I had, what, like 40 minutes left of PE? Like, what am I going to do? He yeah. was like, run another lap. And I was like, okay. So I did. And he was like, you ever thought about uh, doing track? And I was like, Pfft. Nope, I hate fucking running. Like, I don't want to run. Ah, so that was the choice, right? Like, what that if was. in that moment you were like, um, yeah, I'll give it a try. 
and that coach had like coached you through track and then you started running I'd be a track star and you would have at least at minimum went to college on a track scholarship you would have had all of these friends in your life that were also athletic mm -hmm. so you would have been like more in shape throughout your whole life because you would have developed all these lifelong friendships yeah. with people that were also in track mm -hmm. you would have probably also coached children mm -hmm. through track Ooh, either in like middle school or high school yeah I was thinking about you that you would have like... had like a very like fit husband because you would have oh, met god. him on track oh god he would have been like all ripped and whatnot can't, wait can he be one of those track stars with no legs Legs. The family, That'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, maybe the even more epic. Yeah, because even more you are epic. like a very caring and open person. See? So I could imagine oh. you falling in love with like a yeah. runner. Yeah, that'd be so amazing. See, <laughs> that's an amazing life. <laughs> we just invented this whole life for you. Yeah, but I do feel like if I had like did more sports, like track or something, I probably would have been more outgoing, had more friends. Like I would have had something. Yeah. Special. You know, like kind of what we were saying before. I don't know. It would have been more interesting, I guess. I think you're pretty interesting. Eh. You do dental work. You have a lot of people with that. Do you have twins? That's crazy. I look at them all the time. I'm like, how did they not look the same? That's not... <laughs> you started a YouTube channel with me? I mean... Yeah, I suppose. It's not boring. I know that much. So what would you have done differently? When I graduated high school, I felt like I was just way too dumb to go to college. And I so I went to the army right away because I was like, there's nothing else I can do in life. I must do that. And I wish that I had went to college instead. God, I'm so happy you love this book, honestly, because I think I'm gonna read the physical copy. You should listen to the audiobook because Carrie Mulligan, oh my God, she like- Elevates it. Oh my God, to like the extreme. I just love, she's a great actress. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, like I said, I can read this book again. And I will probably wait six to 12 months, you know, so maybe I can forget some parts. I know. So like, that when I read them, I'm like, oh, wow, that was great. But I really <laughs> recommend that a lot of people read it. Yeah. If you just feel like, you know, having a different perspective about your life, which I did not think like I would be introspective after this novel. I was You know me. I read I like military sci-fi <laughs> yeah. action adventure novels that are not mm -hmm. deep. Mm -hmm. Right? My, my novels are like very <laughs> surface level. Shoot, They're shoot, not deep bang. at all. <laughs> <laughs> but this one really made me like look into my soul. I'm like, what is in there? I know. Why is it so dark in my soul? <laughs> Somebody turn a light on. Jesus. It really did. All the time.